Hello and welcome to this Bite Size Briefing. This is your opportunity to hear from an elite athlete on an issue that matters to you. In this video, you will get the chance to hear from professional Jamaican diver, Yona Knight Wisdom, and he'll be sharing his experience around getting involved with physical activity with some useful tips and advice for you as well. Looking forward to getting started. Big thank you to Westfield Health for funding this video. Let's start by taking a look at some of Yona's action clips. Okay, you're not. We've got some quick five questions for you. Alright, sick. But have you seen the view? Okay, let's go. What is your sport? Diving. Favourite food? Ooh, uh, Aki and saltfish, Jamaican style. Favourite film? Harry Potter. Favourite character in film? <laughs> Harry Potter? <laughs> no, that's ridiculous. Um, uh, oh, I'm going to go with Hermione Granger. Where did you grow up? I grew up in Leeds. Hero growing up? Uh, sporting hero was Usain Bolt. First diving competition, where, how did it go? My first diving competition was in Bradford in 2004, just after I started diving. I think I finished seventh, I did all right. And it was only like three months after I started diving, so I was pretty happy with that. Greatest achievement? Winning a World Cup silver medal at the 2016 World Cup in Rio and qualifying for the Olympics at the same time. Favourite country, venue or tournament competed in? Favourite? Country has to be um, Australia. Favorite venue will be the Olympic Pool in Barcelona. And what was the other one? Competed in. Uh, competed in. Favorite tournament for the Olympics. <laughs> Most embarrassing moment. Uh, <laughs> wearing a swimming costume in a competition. That's it. So Yona, brilliant to have you with us. Thanks for joining. How are you doing today? Thank you very much for having me. I'm really good today. Fantastic. So we're looking at the whole idea of moving more and the benefits of physical activity and simple ways that we can add that to our lives. Um, so great to have you with us with all your experience. First question for you. What was your experience of physical activity as a child and as a teenager? Well, as a as a kid, I was I had energy. I had a lot of energy to burn. I I would drive my parents crazy just running around the house and you know nonstop, even doing like gymnastics and things like that. Before I had learned how to do it around the house, um, kind of jumping off chairs and jumping on chairs and everything like that. If I went outside, I'd, you know, I, have, I, I had a bike which I used to enjoy riding around and just kicking the ball around so any type of sport any type of physical activity even from really really young um I was all over it um it, it just it felt like it just came so naturally to me um and it was just something that I really enjoyed doing uh particularly when you know I could do it with friends and you know we could get a little bit competitive and just have a bit of fun so you know from a very early age my parents wanted to teach me how to swim so I went to swimming lessons uh, at the local leisure center literally from like two years old. Um, my best friend that I spent a lot of time with when I was growing up, we used to, you know, just be outside playing TIG when the weather was nice or, you know, when we got a bit older, we'd play tennis or football in this garden, basketball, just just any kind of activity. And it was helpful that he was also very active and, and he enjoyed sport just like me. So we could always like compete with each other and, and, and play with each other. And yeah, that, that, made me realize that I enjoyed sport and I've, I've always felt that sport was going to be a huge part of my life. Um, obviously I managed to find diving at some point. So I did a few years of gymnastics from the age of about four or five to the age of about nine. 
And then at the age of nine, um, diving came and found me and I got started in diving. And, you know, that that pretty much took over my life. You know, it was something I really enjoyed. It's something I thought I was quite good at. Um, but even outside of that, I was still doing sport at school, um, playing football, rugby, cricket, athletics, basically as much as I, ca- as I could. I wanted to be in every single team. Um, I wasn't quite good enough to be in the, the top team at the time for all those different sports, but diving was always there as a constant and that was always a priority. So, you know, if there was ever a time where I had to choose between one or the other, diving would always get the um, get the vote. So, yeah, activity for me was huge. Yeah, that's brilliant. And so for a lot of people uh, watching, the idea of going to that first session or trying a new sport might be a little bit daunting. What was it like for you, um, the idea of going on to that first diving session, brand new sport, brand new people? Uh, what was your experience of that? I, I think at that age, um, the only daunting thing about the diving was the diving itself. You know, seeing the platforms, the 10 metre, it looked a bit scary, but I, I was, again, I was a bit fearless as a kid. I used to enjoy just throwing myself around. Um, and I'd already had a good foundation of gymnastics, so my spatial awareness was already quite good. Um, I was comfortable with doing, you know, some easy somersaults. So when I got in the diving pool, I was quite comfortable with spinning around, being in the air. Um, and then, you know, over time, I got the confidence to go higher and higher and, and you know, eventually jump on 10 meter. But I don't think it took me that long to be able to do that. And even now, I still get the butterflies in my stomach when I do it, because, you know, for a human being in general, it's not a normal thing to do. So, yeah, I wouldn't say I was daunted, but, you know, there's always a bit of a challenge of going into a new environment with new people. You've got to make new friends. And I've had that in various different situations. I'd say one of the biggest situations I had, which is outside of sport, was actually when I joined a new sixth form. Um, so I spent a long period of time at one school and then I changed schools for two years um, right at the end. And that was quite daunting because I knew no one at that school. I um, had loads of good friends that I was leaving behind at my old school, but I knew that that was the right thing for me to do, to go to that school for those two years. And, you know, I just went to it with an open mind and just tried to be friendly and tried to speak to people. And, you know, I ended up making some good friends there, which was really nice. And, And the same thing kind of happened when I started diving or when I changed a group in diving, you know, you have to get to know new people. You might have to get to know a new coach. Um, when I started being able to travel and go internationally, I started meeting new people. And what I've often realized is that even though if it's get, even though it feels scary for you going into that new environment, everyone else in there probably feels the same way. Everyone else in there probably feels a bit nervous. So you're not the outlier and if you could be the one that approaches people and, and you know, says hello or, you know, and just any kind of interaction right from the start, then it becomes so much easier to get comfortable with whoever you're around and everything instantly becomes less daunting. Yeah, really helpful advice there um, for anyone thinking about joining a new sport or going on for that first time. And um, so, yeah, thanks for sharing that. What do you enjoy about your sport and what, um, yeah, what benefit do you get from doing it? <laughs> um it's a it's a love-hate relationship with the sport sometimes I I love I love everything about diving for me the best part of it is the thrill that you get when you're spinning in the air um especially when you know you've got control and you can do the dives well because it's just an amazing feeling especially when you get the dive right it, it's there's nothing that matches it that I've ever experienced in my life so far um I've been fortunate to to be able to travel because obviously I, I represent Jamaica and I get to compete internationally and I've been able to go to a number of cool countries and places I never thought I'd see or experience and um, you know it's been that's been a major major beneficial factor of it and then the third thing is is the friends and the people that you meet. Diving is a very small community and there's a very friendly feel to the sport so you know everyone wants to see everyone do well there's no you know, background games or, you know, mind games that goes on. Everyone's just trying to do their best, but also support other people to do their best as well. So I made some incredible friends over the years in diving um, from different countries, different backgrounds, different 
lifestyles and experiences and that's one of the best parts about it but I'd say the main benefit of diving is that I can stay active and I can stay fit every single day doing something that I actually enjoy and yes sometimes the conditioning that I have to do is hard and I get a bit sore and um, I don't know if you've ever heard of delayed onset of muscle soreness we call it DOMS that can be quite intense sometimes especially in pre-season at the start of the year when you're getting back to fitness and yeah that bit is really hard but when there's a purpose behind it and when there's something in the future that you're working towards and you know the value of the effort that you're putting in at that time will come later on it's it's manageable you can get through it. you can push yourself through that soreness and that pain but you're staying fit and you're staying healthy and you're staying active and everything around that is also healthy you know i eat well i sleep well i um get enough socializing time because i'm out around people where, when i'm training or even when i'm coaching so it's it, there's just so many overall benefits and at the end of the day the bottom line is it's something that i actually enjoy doing and that makes it 10 times easier to get up in the morning and go to training or when i'm feeling a little bit rough you know i can go to training i can still do something that's beneficial for me that's the best bit about diving for me yeah, it's brilliant. So, so many benefits there that affect your life. Like you found something that you really enjoy. You've made good friends there. And now, even though there's a bit of pain with it in terms of the exercise activity, what you're saying about that delayed uh, onset of muscle soreness, um, that those positives seem to outweigh the the benefits for you. Yeah, absolutely. And and you know, there's this classic phrase, "No pain, no gain." Right. So, I believe that for anything in life, if you want to succeed, if you want to do well um you've got to go through a little bit of, of suffering a little bit of challenge a little bit of pain um you know hopefully it's not anything too severe it can be quite superficial quite minimal but I feel like there's got to be some kind of effort put in that that is challenging to take you towards that place of success and that place of enjoyment and actually going through that challenge makes you a better person um builds resilience and it allows you to cope with maybe even more challenging things in the future. You know, I'm, I'm 27 years old. I've been diving for almost 20 years now. Um, but once I eventually retire from diving, I've got a whole other life to, to figure out. And everything that I've learned from diving, all the ups and downs, the, the process of going from, you know, pre-season where it's really difficult all the way through to competition season where I feel amazing. You know, I'm going to have to transfer that to life and all the lessons that I've learned now are going to be very, very useful when I, um, you know, actually start living my normal life post-diving, whatever that may look like. So there's so many benefits from it. And and yeah, you, you just got to go through a little bit of challenge, um, but the, the success and the enjoyment that you can gain from going, getting through it and getting onto the other side of it is amazing. Yeah, really interesting. So yeah, thank you. Um, one other thing, so how does physical activity and playing your sport affect things like your mental health or the way that you view life, like um, whether you have a positive aspect you know, to life? What are your thoughts around that? Yeah, that, that can be a bit difficult because um, with me and my diving, I'm very ambitious and I, I want to achieve a lot. You know, I've, I've been to two Olympics now. Um, I had this dream when I was nine years old that I wanted to be an Olympian and when that time came closer and closer and it became more realistic, um, diving would be more important to me and it would mean a lot more. So every single day, the effort and the energy that I put in would be more meaningful. And if I had a bad session, for example, that might affect the rest of my day. I might feel a little bit down. I might feel a little bit upset, a little bit stressed, a little bit frustrated um for the rest of the day and you know other activities that I might have on during that day could be affected by my diving session but it could be the same thing on on the positive side so if I have a really good diving session I'd feel energetic I'd feel just light and sprightly and just yeah it'd be the complete opposite um for the rest of the day and I actually wanted to try and learn and, and balance that so you know regardless of how my training session went I didn't want it to affect my outside life too much so I try to not get too down by the bad sessions I try to not get too high from the good sessions so I kind of maintain this like level headed approach and level headed attitude to diving and to life because it's all a part of a journey 
And, you know, there's ups and downs on the journey. The downs are very important and the ups are great, but you've got to go through it all. And if you can navigate that with a logical brain and, you know, clear thinking, then it makes the whole process 10 times easier and 10 times more enjoyable. And then it actually, I would say, predicts success a little bit more because when it comes to competitions, when it comes to the the, the really difficult part of it, um, when you're under pressure, if you can maintain a level-headed approach to that and, again, not get too down by the lows or not get too high by the, the highs, <laughs> um, then you're more likely to actually perform well because you've got control of your mental state. So that's something that I've learned and developed over time, um, over many years of, of experience and trial and error and testing different strategies and testing different ways of coping with the pressure and coping with my own uh, mentality in terms of diving training. And I feel like I've found a really good window where I can go to training every single day. I can have fun. I can enjoy it. I can do my best. And regardless of whether it's good or bad, I'll take the lessons and I'll apply that to the next session. And hopefully in the next session, I'll just get that little bit better. And um, whether it's good or bad, I can take the lessons and go to the next session, get a little bit better. And then it's just a slow compounding effect of going up and up and up and up. Even, you know, the ups and downs, yeah, but in general, just slowly getting better and better and better. And then when it comes to the competition, hopefully I'll feel great and hopefully I can perform well. So it's it's hard, but it's something that you've got to kind of just go through and learn. Um, and it takes a little bit of time. Yeah, really interesting. So it sounds like there's lessons that you're learning through your sport and the physical activity that you can apply in all different kinds of life and the different ups and downs that life sometimes brings. Exactly. I can see the parallels between what I do and what an entrepreneur goes through, for example, or even, you know, what you might experience at school um, and the challenges of prepping for exams and, you know, applying for university, things like that. You know, there's ups and downs with everything. You might not get the the offer that you expected uh, you might not get the grades that you wanted you might make a poor decision and lose a lot of money um, in terms of an entrepreneur but there's always lessons there's always things that you can learn uh, from year to year and actually currently I'm going through a really difficult period of time I um, tore one of my knee tendons uh, almost five months ago now which is my first ever major injury the first time I ever had to have surgery I had to wear a, a brace that was restricted to 30 degrees of flexion for two months. Um, and ever since then, I've been working on rebuilding the strength of my leg um, and rebuilding the range of motion, which for, for many can be a really difficult time, a huge challenge on the mental health um, because, you know, the sport that I enjoyed doing was snatched away from me. I wasn't able to do it anymore. Um, but because of everything that I'd learned in the last few years, all the highs and lows, the pandemic was actually very helpful in that respect because that was a really challenging time, which I was able to navigate quite well. Um, I applied everything that I learned to to my rehab rehabilitation period. Um, and, you know, even going through the surgery, I was able to stay super positive and I was able to look forward and set new goals and set new targets and things that I could aim for. Take the little wins from every single day because you know, whether it was being able to lift my leg off the bed when I was laying down or start to bend my knee or start to actually walk upstairs normally, walk downstairs normally, now to being able to jump a little bit more and being able to do a few more dives and get a little bit more powerful. There's such small wins every single day and that meant a huge amount to me and that is how I was able to keep on getting up and keep on pushing myself. And I was able to keep such a cool, level-headed, logical approach to the whole process. Um, and now I feel, you know, I'm not anywhere near my normal standard, but I'm so happy with where I've been able to get to because I've been able to enjoy the journey to a certain extent. And without all the lessons that I'd had in the past and all the experiences that I'd had in diving, the good and the bad, um, I don't think I would have been able to get through this period of time as well as I have done. Yeah, so interesting seeing you go from, yeah, performing, being able to do your sport and keep on improving to now that whole new challenge of coming back from injury. Um, yeah, it's it's really it's really humbling as well because 
you know, you you can almost take it for granted when you're able to do everything just normally and very comfortably. You forget, you, you, I think you lose a bit of perspective and what that injury gave me immediately was a load of perspective because the first thing that I thought after I injured myself is what can I do to get back to my normal level as quickly as possible? And that showed me that I still really enjoyed my sport. That showed me I still really loved diving. That showed me I still had the ambition and the drive and the motivation to um, put in the work to get back to a high level, um, even though I knew it was going to be difficult. And the perspective that gave me on also other important aspects of life was really, really valuable. And I feel like I'm coming out of this process um, a, a better person. And, you know, maybe I won't be a better diver because I had a serious injury, um, but I, I think I'll be a better person for it. Mm, yeah, thank you for sharing that. So there might be some young people watching this video today who the idea of getting involved in physical activity, of moving more, is just so daunting. It's just not what they enjoy at all. And the idea of going and joining a new club is quite scary. Um, what advice do you have for someone who's who's got that real sort of fear or just really does not want to get involved in physical activity? So I'd, I'd kind of give two very major pieces of, of advice. The first one is education. So actually taking the second to learn about the benefits of physical activity, learn about the ways you can improve your physical activity, that'll make the whole process of starting a little bit easier because if you can understand and appreciate the benefits, then it makes you more likely to actually do it because you know how it's going to help you. So, you know, there's so many articles, you can Google things, um, you can watch inspirational people and look at the journeys that they've been on from a place of physical inactivity to a place of physical activity regularly and see how much they've gained from doing that. Um, that's the first major, major point um, is education. And then the second piece of advice I'd give is just start slow. Don't try and copy exactly what someone that you're inspired by does. Don't try and copy them because they've probably been doing it for a very long time. You know, if, if you if you looked at me, for example, and you tried to, you thought, oh, actually, you know what, I want to get active. I want to try diving, but I want to try dive like you. Know, if you try and dive like me, you won't get it right because I've been doing this for 19 years, 20 years almost. Um, so you have to start slow. You have to start from the bottom. Um, and it, it takes a little while, but when you do it right and when you do it progressively, then the benefits will be much more apparent. And um, the enjoyment will be much more apparent as well, because if you start too quickly or you start with too much, then it will feel really, really difficult and you won't want to go back because it's really, really hard and you won't feel the benefits straight away. You won't feel the, the progress straight away and it'll be very frustrating and it'll be hard to just keep on going. But if you start slowly and you start easy, start with something that you can definitely do, something something that you know you can get a bit of a, a boost from because yeah, you can do that, it's really good. Um, and then progressively you make it a little bit harder and a little bit more challenging and a little bit more difficult. And you maintain that level for a period of time and it becomes easier and then you can step up another level. And that progressive improvement, progressive, um, uh, progressive load in terms of the, the challenge of the exercise or, or whatever it is that you're doing will feel so much better and it'll feel so much in, more enjoyable for sure. Yeah, so it's something like everyone can and start in that in that journey. Um, and I think like you said before, you know, you've made a lot of friends through it. So maybe doing things with friends um, and that sense of achievement as well that you get from each step of the journey, you're getting progressively better. Um, is that a big part of getting involved in, in sport and physical activity? Yeah, 100 percent. You know, doing things with friends makes it even better as well, because you know, if you're like me, I'm extremely competitive. So if I do anything with my friends, I want to try and beat them straight away. Um, that's my first thought. But if you're not competitive, you know, having people around you doing the same thing as you or, or, or pushing you or you can push them is that they understand what you're going through and you can have someone that you relate to. 
And it just makes the whole process a lot easier because sharing that experience will help you do more and help you push harder. Um, and it also, you know, it creates memories and creates fun things, you know, like there, there are many stories that I've had over the years that I'll reflect on for years and years and years to come with my friends that I've enjoyed, you know, within diving, whether it's diving related or not, because we've met through diving and because we share that experience and share that knowledge and share that understanding, we can help each other, but also um, when things go wrong or when things feel difficult, you can also laugh about it because there's someone with you that that understands it and, and can help you find the funny side because it's not always going to be perfect. It's not always going to be um, amazing, but you know when it does go wrong or if it's difficult, the best way to get through it is by laughing about it. And the easiest way to laugh about it is if you have someone with you to laugh about it with. Yeah, it's a great way to look at it, been able to enjoy it, been able to laugh together. Um, yeah. Yeah, been able to enjoy that journey. Yeah, in, in, in diving, you know, um, if you get it wrong, the water hits you pretty hard <laughs> and it can be a bit painful. And, and that's just the reality of the sport, unfortunately. But um, my way of dealing with that over the years is is literally just to laugh at myself first. And, you know, if someone else wipes out, I'll, I'll laugh at them. <laughs> Um, as long as I see they're okay, I'll, I'll I'll laugh and hopefully that'll boost their spirits a little bit and, and help them feel better straight away rather than just being upset and, you know, being down or crying about the situation. Um, if you can laugh it off, um, then it makes it so much better. That's a really good way to look at it. And so last question for you. What about on the other end? You might have some young people here that love being involved with physical activity, with sport, want to progress in their sport and do the best they possibly can what advice do you have for those young people yeah that, if if you feel that way about sport in the first instance then that's amazing that's that's such a huge benefit straight away so congratulations for that um my advice for you would be to just push yourself out, outside of your comfort zone um if it feels easy and if it feels you know straightforward then there's there's more challenge in there and and there's more that you can gain if you just step outside your comfort zone so whether that's maybe trying something different or something new or trying new skills within your sport or actually trying to take a step up to another level of competition and and challenging and just seeing how you cope then you know maybe you don't cope and maybe you have to take a step back but at least you've tried it in, and you know that you know that you you've done your best um, or maybe it does go really well and you actually gain more enjoyment out of it because you've done better than you expected. Um, for example, again, with my injury, me and my coach sat down uh, a couple of months ago now and we drew out a timeline of, of where I thought I could be at certain dates um, in terms of my recovery and my rehab. And we set what we thought was quite an ambitious and very optimistic timeline. We thought that was going to be the best case scenario in terms of how quickly I could recover and how quickly I could get back to doing certain things um, in the diving pool and outside the diving pool. And we're actually about a month ahead of the schedule that we we set, um, which when we were doing it at the time, there's no way I thought that'd be possible. I thought it'd be the other way around. I thought I'd be a month behind potentially. I thought it was way too ambitious, but because I set my ambition and set the challenge to that high level, now being ahead of it it feels amazing it feels so good it feels like I've done such good work and it feels like I've really pushed myself so um yeah if it feels easy then you need to push yourself harder you need to, to give more especially if you enjoy it get competitive with yourself and with other people and and just just keep on going because there's so you, you can do so much more than you really believe you can do so much more than you believe well, I think that's a great way to end there with that line about the young people watching here, you can do so much more than you believe. Um, so yeah, thank you so much, Yona, for sharing a little bit of your experience and advice for young people watching today. Um, so thanks for coming with us. You're welcome. Hey, my name is Yona Knight Wisdom. I'm a diver and I've got a few exercise challenges for you. So this is challenge number one. We call it tuck kicks. So you make a tuck shape by squeezing your shins and kick out to a dish without letting your feet hit the floor. 
Then we move on to challenge two, which is pike ups, reaching up and over your toes, again back down to the dish without your feet hitting the floor. Now this is the hand grab, you're going to need this for the next exercise. Put one hand on top of the other, squeeze the fingers, and then reach above your head. So we can practice in the dish shape without your feet hitting the floor, just reaching back and grabbing your hands. Moving on to the tuck kick with a line up, so kick into dish, then looking back with your head and then moving your hands back into the grab position. To take it up to one more level, we can do the same thing with the pike up. So reaching up and over your toes, looking back, and then reaching back with your hands without your heels touching the floor. Try five to 10 reps of each exercise and let me know how you get on. So for all you watching, I think there's so much you can take away there, whether it's a real struggle for you to get involved with physical activity, or whether you're already competing and playing physical activity, there's some advice and tips that you can take from Yona um, to apply in your own situation. So Yona, thank you again for coming on and a big thank you to Westfield Health for making this video possible.